Feast of Tabernacles, part six, day six. Lessons for today. Change of times and the replacement of Yah's law. Two, Yah's law and the religious syncretism. Three, Satan's deception, which led to God worship. Four, false teaching on the laws. False teaching that the laws are done away with. But we look at this four. And um, if there is any other thing we will add to it, we do. But it will flow. I will not be mentioning them as subject matter or subtitles, but I will you know, make sure that in each of all those areas, I will thoroughly emphasize what the subtitle is all about. Pastor, can you repeat those titles again, please? One, the, two, three, and four. Yes, uh, that is the lessons for today. Change yeah. of times and yeah. replacement of Yah's law. Yeah. The second one, Yah's laws and the religious syncretism. Yah's laws and religious syncretism. Yeah. Satan's deception that led to God worship. Then the fourth one, false teaching on the laws or that the laws are done away with. False teachings that the laws are done away with. Now, let's take number one. Thank you. Beast changed the law. The beast changed the law. Um, if you look at this aspect, because what, what, what we are really looking at is, why is it that majority, many, many massive population of Israelites scattered all over the world today, and the Gentiles that have come in contact with Israelites, Maybe by virtue of their knowledge to Torah that would have learned the way of Yahweh. Why is it that they lack knowledge? Why is it that they don't go the way of Yahweh? Because the whole of the scripture, right from Genesis to Revelation, is Yahweh is screaming, obey me, observe my word, observe my commandment, do them. If you do them, shall be well with you. It shall, it, shall pro, it shall prolong your life. Your obedience will cause your life to be prolonged. And if by any means you are ill or anything, you call upon Yahweh, Yahweh will hear you. Even before you pray, he will answer. If you don't have anything, go to Yahweh, Yahweh will answer. It's when we obey, we have wonderful, beautiful, glorious relationship with our Father. Even when we are afflicted, persecuted, and troubled, Yahweh will be there to respond, to help us. Why is it that those who we are given the Torah, the covenant law, the covenant commandments, are not there? They are not even in any way mentioning his name, not even assembling themselves to keep these days that he asked us to keep shabbat or the holy days called the holy feasts why now the leaders the leaders that led israel began this problem they they caused change or changes in the commandments of yahweh in the in the word that yahweh gave to them and when they, because as the change occurred, they left the word of Yahweh and they entered into trouble, affliction, persecution, trouble of all man, all manners, even war, swept them away. They were carried out 
from their land into the Gentile world, where they are today. Deuteronomy chapter 26, no, no, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and uh, Leviticus 26 did tell us what they are going through today. The trouble, the problems they are because of rejecting, changing, and denying Yahweh and fellowshipping with the adversary, the enemy of Yahweh. So as a result, Israelites are having serious problems wherever they are. And it's like grow, 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 groaning in the dark, groaning to the point you don't know where your help is, is going to come from because they always said he's going to hide his face. He's going to, you know, remove himself from them. And that's what happened. And that's what is still happening. So let us look at these changes and the replacement that occurred that brought serious problem and is still bringing serious problems until his people return back to him. In, Le in Leviticus 26, he said, until Israelites will repent of their sins and the sins of their fathers. Why their fathers? Their fathers because their fathers were the people that brought about these changes that happened, that taught them even to rebel against him. So until they re repent, confess their sins, return to him, confess the sins of their fathers, he always said, until that is done, he will not return to them. Now, let's look at these leaders. At the end of the day, the leaders, their government, and everything is called the beast. So you will hear the word beast being used along the line and so on. Beast changed the law. Beast changed the law. Now, in yesterday's discussion, we looked at the need for us to obey the commandments of Yahweh. And so, what clearly came out in yesterday's discourse was how we can receive righteousness of Yahweh. And if we apply ourselves to righteousness of Yahweh, then Yahweh, in his infinite mercy, will, you know, align with us, will return to us, and he will no longer hide himself. He will help us to prevail over issues of life, circumstances that, you know, uh, inhibit us, that cause real stumbling block. Now, through ages, human rulers and governments took away Yahweh's name from the pages of the Bibles. They changed his calendar and some of his holy laws, including the feasts. These leaders instituted their own religious doctrines and influenced the people of Yah to follow their pagan way of worship. This resulted to a mixture of Yahweh's way with worldly religious ways, which Yahweh forbids, like we are reading this morning in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and Deuteronomy chapter 12. All those things that Yahweh forbids, that's what they ended up doing. In recent time, the people of Yah have been tracing historical antecedents to understand the mixture of religions with the covenant way. Yes, most of those that the spirit of Yahweh has alerted, most of brethren across the world, they are making frantic efforts, searching what has happened to Israel, what has happened to us, and why are we well why are we where we where we are today and are into a different kind of worship? What we are doing is it what is permitted of us? So there is serious questions and questions and questions. And by the grace of Yahweh, the Holy Spirit is allowing his people 
to look into the same Bible and uh, through some some uh, either direct message or instruction or errors committed by those who we are doing the changes, the truth are coming out. And those are, you know, those messages or um, what we are produced or what we see are interfaced with what the history or what history provides because most of the things that are not in the Bible can be found in the historical life of Israel, wherever it is written, wherever one can find it, or find such a, a history. The prophet Daniel shows that the beasts changed the holy days of Yahweh to pagan celebrated holy days. Now, the pagan feast is different from Yahweh's feasts. So the change was meant to tweak Yahweh's laws to suit the pagan, because it, it's like marrying the two laws, Yahweh's laws and the pagan laws, marrying them, putting them together, and uh, you know, pushing them out as a form of religion. And that is where the trouble began. The beast is a combination of politics and religion. What is called the beast is a combination of politics of the world. That's what the world, the, the, the way the world dictates or finds to rule themselves, politics and religion. That is state or politics and church. Now, these are controlled by secular leaders and clergies. For example, the Roman Catholic Church, renowned as universal church, was led by Emperor Constantine and the bishops of Rome about 321 and 325 CE, whereby the seventh day Shabbat rest was changed to first day Sunday. Now, Feast of Passover was changed to Easter, etc. You can read that in our book, Babylon is Falling. Lay hands on it, Babylon is Falling. All that we have quite explained there. As noticed in 1 Samuel chapter 8, the people of Yahweh borrowed what was happening in the Gentile nations into their governance. They demanded a king to rule over them instead of Yahweh as their king through his appointed leaders. Because Yahweh was uh, leading Israel at that time by the leaders that he, he appointed to them, like seers, uh, say Samuel, like prophets, you know, and even judges. Today, all over the world, the states use politics to form government. Both state and church appoint for themselves holidays, which the whole world celebrate. For instance, Christmas, Easter, Halloween, Thanksgiving, as they have it in America, called the Thanksgiving Day, Valentine's Day, May Day, New Year Day, etc., all have the state and the religious Church's approval. In this scenario, the state and the church share common feasts, celebrations. In the marriage between the church and the state, lots of pagan values are in place for their participation. In this kind of syncretic synergy, the whole world became involved in pagan holidays, which are declared by state and the church. Yahweh forbids his people from following worldly way of life, and he wants that they should not be involved to anything that will undermine their faith they have in him. 
See Deuteronomy. Reference is made to Deuteronomy chapter 12, 29 to 31. Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 14. Deuteronomy 7, 1 to 10. Matthew 6, verse 7. 1 Thessalonians 4, 4 to 6. Romans 1, 24 up to 26. Ephesians 4, 17 to 19. Unfortunately, Yahweh's feasts as recorded in Leviticus 23 and Deuteronomy 16, Exodus 12, etc., have been cast away by Yahweh's people as a result of their mingling, observing and celebrating Gentile appointed days of worship and festivals. By abandoning Yahweh's feasts for pagan feasts, the people of Yahweh are today led like sheep to the slaughter. And that's why there is so much trouble going on around them. Was change of Yahweh's times, seasons, and laws prophesied? Did Yahweh warn about this and speak about this through his prophets? Yes. Most of the prophets clearly foretold that the beasts of the world would cause a change to happen. For instance, Daniel and Isaiah was precise in, his, in their prophecies about the beast change of times and Yahweh's feast days and laws, as we read in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. I read, and he will speak. Now, this is the beast at the time. We see this happened when the, the Greeks, you know, conquered Jerusalem, the land of Israel, so to speak. Now, there was a change at that time. Their calendar, the Hebrew calendar was changed. The laws of Yahweh was changed and some other things that happened. So that is what is being said. Even when the Roman Empire also conquered the land of Israel, the same thing happened. And he will speak great words, pompous words against Yahweh, and will wear out persec and, or persecute, mentally attack to cause to fall away the sense of Yahweh, and think to change times, Yahweh's feast days and laws. Then, the saints will be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. This reading is extracted from the book of Yahweh. The book of Yahweh. Now, this prophecy of Daniel is an ongoing. In these latter days, Book of Revelation chapter 13 explains or tells us who the beast would be and how the beast will emerge. The government of the day is aligning themselves towards achieving one world government. And you find out that Yahweh's own times or the Yahweh's own time season, that is calendar, Yahweh's laws, and their ways, you know, feasts have been changed, like we read earlier, how the church and state have, you know, uh, worked together, embraced together to kind of do things in one, you know, in, 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 in one conditioned way, whereby people of the world flow through the, the religious bodies and all that, then they flew along with the human societies, the, the governments, and so on and so forth. So as a result, there are days of feasts or festivals created, which they call holidays, and everybody are engaged. People, I mean, people are engaged freely to celebrate all this. Now, most of these celebrations, identified 
is the rights we are told that they will undermine their faith if such holidays or such festivities has anything to do with paganism, idolatry, that they will be ensnared in their part of it. And when that happens to them, Yahweh will withdraw. That we read the other day, two days ago, and we discussed a bit of it yesterday, that when we disobey Yahweh, he withdraws from his people. Now let's listen to Isaiah, Isaiah 24, 5, verse 6. The earth is also defied under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance. Did you hear that? The, the cost changes of Yahweh's laws. They have broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, the cost has devoured the earth and those who dwell in it are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men are left. So, as a result of human rebellion, in, in, in the days ahead will be terrible. Days ahead will be terrible. Whereby, you know, a situation whereby people are going to literally defy the way of Yahweh and um, the beast will have his own, you know, mode or way through which people, human beings on earth, will worship him. And everybody will be made to submit to, to the beast. And as a result, the laws, the feasts of Yahweh will all be overthrown. Already they're overthrown because the, the, the governments of the world doesn't recognize the laws of Yahweh. The governments of the world today do not have anything to do with the feasts of Yahweh. So they have their own feasts they carved out with the churches, the, 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 the religious bodies of of our time. So that is what Yahweh is pointing out here. That when that is done, the, the world will be in, in ruins, in, in decay. And we can see that the world is going, <laughs> is stumbling. If it has not tumbled. Yes. It, the, Isaiah was specific. He said, therefore the cause has devoured the earth. And those who dwell in it are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. So at the end of the day, human beings will not agree amongst themselves. The issue, I mean, the, war, the life will be chaotic. Nations will war against nations. People will war against themselves. Community, tribes, and so on. There will be no peace. As a result, there will be devastation. That's why he was talking about desolation. And a lot of souls will perish. And that's why he said that few men will be left. So human being is heading into the time, into the you know moments when all this will envelop. So prophets prophesied or showed to us what is even yet to come. It has been happening, but in this latter days, it's going to, you know, climax to such a, 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 a temple that if people do not discover Yahweh, such souls will perish. If they don't find Yahweh, they will, they will be destroyed. Yahweh warns that the beast will change Yahweh's calendar, feasts, and the laws, and they replace these with their own laws and feasts. Now, to serve the beastly government is to depart from service and worship of Yahweh. Therefore, either you serve Yahweh by obeying every word that proceeds from his mouth, carrying Yahweh's mark of righteousness, or 
you serve Satan by celebrating her pagan holidays and breaking Yahweh's laws, carrying Satan's mark of disobedience to Yahweh. There is no way anyone can truly combine the service of Yahweh and Satan. No way. Although people do it, they do combine, thinking it's okay. But Yahweh gets angry with them and forsake them. As we read in Isaiah chapter 1, Ezekiel chapter 8, Ezekiel chapter 8, and so many Bible passages. It is not scripturally possible to serve Yahweh and Satan at the same time. It's not possible. The simple fact is, if one is not serving Yahweh with all his heart, with all his heart, mind, and being, obeying Yahweh's every word, then the person is simply serving Yahweh, uh, serving Satan. If the person cannot, with all his might, everything within him, serve Yahweh outright, obey his instruction, that person automatically will serve Satan. The apostle Paul was inspired to write for our instruction. And he told us, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 21, you cannot drink the cup of Yahweh and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of Yahweh's table and of the table of demons. It's not possible to do the two at the same time. See that somebody is serving Yahweh or the person will be serving the other. If you accept the days inaugurated by the beast led by Satan who influences the worldly churches and assemblies to worship him, the very day, e.g. Sunday, will mark you as belonging to Satan and not to Yahweh. If you accept Satan's mark, then you have no protection from Yahweh. You will suffer the horrors that are coming upon this earth. Revelation chapter 16, verse 2. And the first, and the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth. And there came a noisome and grievous sore upon the men who had the mark of the beast, and upon those who worshipped his likeness. Now, this is what the leaders, the so-called beastly powers that form various kind of government and religious bodies and affiliations, what they did to take away the word of Yahweh and replace the word of Yahweh with their own laws and their own festivals. The word of Yahweh that command us to be specific instructions that will enable us to serve him. So these leaders never, you know, allowed that to happen. They, they, they removed and eliminated the word of Yahweh the law of Yahweh, the commandments of Yahweh, and they instituted their own laws. And that's where Israelites all over the world, that's how people all over the world today focus to worship of the adversary, the God of this world. And that's why the scripture said that this very God the, that human beings worship deceived them Unknown, unknown to them, they are all wired away to this powerful you know, being who made himself all and all, seal their eyes, seal their ears, seal their heart to himself so that they cannot see beyond you know, the, what is given in the Book of Covenant. Because if they notice and discover what is given in the Book of Covenant, they will surely, you know, do away with the worship of Satan, and they will find their way to worship to worship Yahweh. And today, most of us are being called are being called out by the grace of Yahweh in the captivity of this enemy, so that we find 
the truth from the word of your friend, the book of the covenant, and return back to Yahweh. Now let us look at Satan's deception, the deceit that has ensued all this long. Your own Bible says that this world or the whole world is deceived. Bible said it clear. And when we read such a thing, even in Christendom, we take it for granted. I mean, so what somebody will say is, Satan has deceived us, he, he deceived. It's not them. But at the same time, the person, the individual reading such a thing is bowing to the, 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 the adversary called God. They bow to God or the Lord. By doing that, the person submits to the one that has caused deception. Now, if one will read for himself from the book of James, King James Version, sorry, if one can read from King James Version, either from the book of Covenant or whatever Bible anyway, one will see in Revelation 12, 9, how Yahshua specifically told us what Satan is doing. It reads, Revelation 12, verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. To show you the extent of Satan's deceit, Satan has called preachers all over this world to tell you that the very laws which Yahweh gave as his mark are all done away with all are nailed to the cross. That's what Satan preached. However, if you follow this deceived teaching, then you will suffer the causes which come upon all who break the laws of Yahweh. Now, Yahshua warned, Revelation chapter 22, 18 to 19. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, Yahweh will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, Yahweh shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. This warning stated clearly that the addition, what they added from worldly religion to corrupt the word of Yahweh and what they removed from the word of Yahweh to ensure that knowledge, the true knowledge of Yahweh will not be held or be internalized or followed. That anybody, both those who removed and added, that anybody that follows such teaching, which is false teaching, deception of Satan, that such a person will miss Yahweh and miss his kingdom. It is clear. It is absolutely clear. Satan does not want you to obey Yahweh's every word, every word as written in Deuteronomy chapter 3, I mean, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, Matthew 4, verse 4, Luke 4, verse 4. Satan knows that you will be protected from Yahweh if you are obedient. If you are obedient to Yahweh, Yahweh will protect you. It is Satan's ambition to destroy the human race. He's been working hard towards that so that he will cover the earth with the wicked people. Because anybody who submits to Satan and worship him will belong to his family, will belong to his kingdom. So Satan and his fallen spirits, fallen devil, fallen demons, and so, so on and so forth, fallen angels, all of them, they want to take the earth forever and ever and 
flush away human beings who will not to their their way of life. They want to flush. That is what is happening. That is the war. The war between good and evil is ongoing and is getting worse. It's getting fiercer, terrible, and you know, to the point that ordinary living human beings will not escape it if they don't return to Yahweh. Satan knows that one day all who follow Yahweh's way will become the sons and daughters of Yahweh. That is why he's working hard to make sure that before people get aware, before people are into, you know, the new, that is, revealed way, revealed knowledge, revealed laws of Yahweh, before people are acquainted to it, he want to stop them. And this fighting has is working hard. First John 3 verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of Yahweh. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Satan knows that the sons of Yahweh will take possession of the kingdoms, that is governments of this world. Isaiah 9, 6 verse 7, I'm going to give you massive uh, Bible passages for you to check out. Daniel 2, verse 35 and verse 4, 44. Daniel 2, 35 and 44. Daniel 7, 22, 26 to 27. Luke 1, 33. Uh, Isaiah 60, verse 12. All these passages affirm that the kingdom of this world one day and not long Yahshua will return and repossess the earth and he will hand them, I mean, he will hand the kingdoms of the earth to the saints and he himself will be the head of, would, you, would I call it head of state? He is going to be the head of the world government. He is going to be the ruler of the earth. He is going to be the, the commander in chief. So all the world rulers and their, you know, their leaders will be cut off. And that will be the end of Satan's power on earth. That will be the end of the power of Satan and his rule on earth. And all those that rule with him, they will all be cut off. The possession that Satan now holds in, in as you know, in terms of controlling and ruling the world is clear. And the Bible said it clearly that Satan is the ruler of this world. Satan is the prince of this world. Satan is the God of this world. The Bible is clear. Check out from these Bible passages. There's no time for me to start reading them one by one. Second Corinthians 4.4 4 mentions Satan as the God of this world. Luke 4, 4 to 5, Matthew 4, 8 to 9. All these mention Satan as either God or prince or ruler. Ephesians 2, 2 to 4. Ephesians 2, 2 to 4. John 12, verse 31. John 14, verse 30. Verse 30. John 14, 30. Revelation 20, verse 2. Revelation 12, verse 9. 1 Peter 5, verse 8. First Peter, sorry, First Peter chapter five, verse eight. First Peter five eight. First Thessalonians two, verse nine. First Thessalonians two, verse nine. Ephesians six, verse twelve. John sixteen, verse eleven. Just find time to read all this because they are vital to what we are discussing here. Who Satan is, people do not know. But Yahshua made it clear. The disciples, the apostles, they wrote about Satan as the God, the ruler, the prince of this world. And they said that he is still holding forth. And he will continue to fight on until he will lead everybody astray. And get to the point whereby he will almost wipe the earth 
out and they are sure will quickly return to save not only the earth but the elect Amen. and that will be the end of his government is yes, that we read isaiah chapter 14 where yahweh specifically said he's going to crush him and ezekiel chapter 28 where he said he's going to crush him because he has not only misled people has caused people to worship him he made himself idle and because he's a created being, Satan is a created being. At the end of the day, the title that is meant for the sons of Yahweh, gods, sons of Yahweh are the angels, and they are called gods. So Satan took that title, blindfolded people, you know, blocked their ears, blocked their heart, that they will not know the truth. So he made himself the god of this world, the prince of this world, the ruler of this world, and ever since, human beings have been serving him. But we, the obedient people, the children of Yahweh, know that we are from Yahweh. Although the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. First John chapter 5, verse 19. It's exactly from the word of Yahweh it says, know that we are from Yahweh. The obedient children of Yahweh are from Yahweh. Although the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. So the entire world is ruled and controlled by Satan. That's what he's saying. We read about Yahshua Messiah being tested by Satan and the devil in Matthew chapter 4. And Luke chapter 4. Remember, when Satan was cast down on earth, what he did was to grab the earth by doing what? Deceiving Adam and Eve, who was given dominion, the power to rule, the authority to rule everything, rule, control everything on earth. He was jealous, he was envious, and at the end of the day, he took away that power of. Uh, um, uh, Adam. And that's why when Yeshua came, the, the second Adam, the one that Yahweh, the seed that Yahweh promised Adam, that is going to come out from the woman, to do what? To teach them righteousness through which they will return back to him. Now, Satan wanted to corrupt this seed, the second Adam. So in Matthew chapter 4, we read about this, uh, you know, the story, what happened. And even Luke chapter 4 mentioned that. Dear Satan claimed that the whole world was given to him. He claimed. How? Remember that the world was given to, to Adam. But because of Adam's fall, that dominion was removed, uh, removed from him. Satan took it away. So Satan deceived Adam and collected the dominion of the earth from him. That's why he was able to tell Yahshua, the whole earth is his. Only if he will do one thing. Mm -hmm. Now we read something in this passage. Let's look at the Matthew chapter 4, 8 to 9. Again, the devil took him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the magnificence of them and said to him i will give you all these things if you will fall down and worship me you see listen to what satan was requiring from yeshua he did that to adam and eve what did he require from them he wanted to kill, take away the earth he wanted to possess the earth and even the mankind. So he said, bow down and worship. So the controversy, the conflict that Yahweh has been having from Satan is about worship. Worship. In this world, ask yourself who you worship. Because it's because of worship. Satan caused trouble in heaven. 
one third of angels followed him. They worshipped him. So when he was defeated, cast down into this earth, he did the same thing to human, human beings. Took away the, 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 the power that was given to Adam and he possessed the earth. He was allowed to do that. But Yahweh gave him 6,000 years for him and both human beings, you know, to, to use their head and walk the way, wherever, however they like. Choose whatever they want to do. After that, on the seventh day, which will be 7,000th year, uh, mm -hmm. Yahweh will come back and repossess the earth. That's why Yahshua is coming back. So Satan tried to deceive Yahshua to worship him. If Yahshua had bowed himself to Satan, then that would have been the end of his mission. He wouldn't have achieved the goal of, you know, restoration of man, salvation of man. But he defeated Satan. He never bowed to Satan. Rather, he reminded Satan what he ought to do because he's a creature. He was a creature of Yahweh. Yahweh created him. He ought to bow to Yahweh, ought to worship Yahweh. So Yahshua reminded him what he should do. Let's move on. I must inform you, if you did not already know it, the present world kingdoms are possessed by Satan, and he gives any kingdom or country to anyone, whether leaders, kings, presidents, prime ministers, etc., of his choice. Yahshua Messiah did not rebuke Satan's offer by saying anything to effect that these kings or king, these kingdoms are yours, are not yours. When Satan invited him and said, This kingdom is his, he's, he's ready to give it out to him, but he must bow to him first. Yahshua didn't rebuke Satan because that is what happened. Satan stole it away from Adam. So Yeshua knew that. Rather, what Yeshua did was, or what he said was, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. Away, you Satan, away. For it is written, you shall worship Yahweh, your father, and him only you shall serve. You see, Yeshua told him that Yahweh is his father because Yahweh created him. So it's one of the gods that Yahweh created. All the angels, all of them are created by Yahweh. Satan inclusive. Here he was trying to teach Yahshua what to do, how to worship, and who to worship, to worship him. Yahshua reminded him, remember. He thought Yahshua didn't know him or didn't understand what he was plotting. Because if Yahshua has submitted, that will have been the end of human salvation through him. Yahshua knew that Satan has caused all mankind to worship him. All that Satan did, all that Satan the devil is seeking from everyone is to worship and serve him. By this grave, he deceived all mankind to believe that he is the God of this world, who everyone allegiance or must submit to. Again, Yahshua Messiah knew that Satan is the God of this world just as it is stated without doubt in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 to 4. Listen carefully. But if our message is hidden, it is hidden to those who are lost. For the God, did you hear that? For the God, Satan, of this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe, so that the light of the message of the glory of the Messiah, who is the image of Yahweh, should not shine unto them. Soon, however, these kingdoms will be given to the sons of Yahweh, and they will rule them instead of Satan. Satan will be cut off from the earth. Amen. That is scripture for us. Let's look at Daniel chapter 7, 21 to 22 and verse 27. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, 
and prevailed against them. But Satan is going to, he's working that out in this later days. After the formation of the one world government and other, the beast will go after the children of Yahweh. Psalm chapter 2 is clear there. They gang up against Yahweh, against Yahshua, against the people of Yahweh. But Yahweh said, hey, be careful. You nations, you leaders, return to Yahshua, bow to him, or else he will send him to destroy you, to conquer you. <laughs> and that is what is coming as we head into the future. Now continue from Daniel chapter 7, I read verse 20, 22 there. Until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of Yahweh. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdoms. Judgment, Yahweh will sit with his council in heaven. And the judgment will be handed to the children of Yahweh, to the saints. That will be when Yahshua will be returning because he will be empowered to deal, to capture Satan and throw him somewhere. And the kingdom of the earth will be taken or be handed to the saints. Now, verse 27, Daniel 7, 20, verse 27. Then the kingdom and government and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints of Yahweh, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all the governments will serve and obey him. Did you hear that? This is the word of Yahweh that can never be disputed. It is coming. This is prophecy of Yahweh. It's not fulfilled yet. It's coming. Now, let's look at false teaching on the laws or the false teaching that the false teachings have been done away with. False teachers, false pastors, false prophets. That is what we hear them tell us. Satan's preachers do not get their teachings from the Holy Scriptures, from the Book of Covenant or the Book of the Law, or from the Bible. They don't. They are not getting whatever they are pumping into the heads of people are just from their own mindset, are just from the prince of the air. Satan that is their leader, their father. They are getting the instruction Anybody that is not following Yahweh, anybody that is not in line or have faith with Yahshua, the person will be receiving messages from the prince of the air via the false teachers and false prophets. That is, it is the biblical fact that can never be removed. Not just fact, truth. If they did, they would be teaching exactly what the scriptures themselves say, but they don't teach from the Bible, no. Rather, rather than teaching what they want, sorry, get that again. Mm -hmm. They are teaching outrightly from their own master. Satan is the one giving them what they teach, what they speak and all that. So if they were to follow the biblical book they would have been giving people outrightly the truth from the word of yahweh and the word wouldn't have been what it is today for example there is positively no scripture in the entire bible that says any of yahweh's laws judgments or status we are ever done away with nowhere the false teachers and false pastors teach religions made up of traditions of elder, traditions or, or commandments of elders or commandments of men. In fact, the following scriptures should prove the point that false teachers do not teach from the book of covenant or the Bible. First John chapter 2, 3 to 4 says, Now by this we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Those commandments are how many? 613 laws, as we noticed yesterday. He who says, I know him, but does not keep his law, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. People do say, ah, 
How can we keep all the laws of your as if it is <laughs> as if it covers the whole earth? This is a reminder us that the laws of the world, the laws of the governments of the of the world that come from Satan himself, is in 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 its thousands and millions. Those in one country is not even enough because when somebody cross to another country, he will obey the laws even in that very country. So from country to country, their laws even differs in one way or the other. And they're in their thousands, they're in their millions. But Yahweh's law is just 613 laws. So which one? And the summary of it is just 10 laws, all the Ten Commandments, which summarize the entire Bible. Ten Commandments. How many of those ten are they keeping or are they obeying? People are really, really, because Satan tells them, do not obey, do not listen, do not adhere to the commandments of Yahweh. That is the cause of what is going on. First John 3, 4 to 6. First John 3, 4 to 6. Whoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law, as the breaking of the law. And you know that he who was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has not seen him, neither knows him. Uh, let us go back a little bit. First John 2, 3 to 4 did tell us that if you say you know him, but you do not keep the commandments of Yahweh, Say that person is a liar. But if the person is a keeper of the commandments of Yahweh, the laws of Yahweh, the person is a saint, a righteous person. Righteousness is obtained via keeping the commandments of Yahweh, via keeping the word of Yahweh, via you know observing and keeping the laws of, of Yahweh. That's how how righteousness is obtained. So we see here that the scripture is telling us what sin is. When somebody refuses to keep the word of Yahweh, the law of Yahweh, the person is sinning. That is what sin is. It's transgression, breaking, denying, cutting off, refusing to obey the word of Yahweh. Is sin. James 2, 8 to 11. Let's listen to James. All these are New Testament. It's not the Old Testament. They say, oh, the Old Testament is old. It's, it's something of Israel or Jews. You know, cut it off, remove it because it's old. This is New Testament, which Christians even say they, they, they uphold. If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you must love your brother as yourself. You do righteousness. But if you show respect to persons, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet offends in one point of the law, he is guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, yet you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. Yahweh's Ten Commandments, which are a general outline for all the laws of Yahweh, 613 of them, are found in Exodus chapter 20 and Deuteronomy chapter 5. It is a scriptural fact that Yahshua's apostles taught all of Yahweh's laws to the people, or they simply would not have been his apostles. If they didn't teach, that means they wouldn't, nobody would call them apostles of Yahshua. But they taught, they showed people, they left even where Yahshua stopped, they continued. Up to today, what they taught, what Yahshua taught, what the disciples taught, are what we are learning, that the law is there and can never be terminated, can never be stopped. Yeshua said, I did not come to destroy the law and the prophets. 
He came to fulfill. That is, he came to magnify and make it honorable so that we can obey those things that added, those things that they removed. Yeshua came to define and make them, put them straight so that we can afford ourselves to obey them, do them. So you must do them. We find Yeshua Messiah himself saying in Matthew 5, 17, do not even think that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy them, but to establish them. Reading from book of Yahweh. That is how it's written, book of Yahweh. And book of covenant as well. Or book of law, that is the book of, that is what is called the Bible today. Matthew 5, 17. Reading from King James Version, it says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That fulfill means to establish, because Yeshua is the one that is coming to deliver. It's like saying, oh, salvation will be given back to you, Adam and Eve. So that one, that message, that, you know, um, promise of Yahweh, in the Genesis, the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, here it is fulfilled by Yeshua, by coming to do what? To present the law as it is, so that they will follow it. That is establish. He came to establish that which was taken away, because Satan took that law away. And up to this age, because we learned about the beasts taking away the law of Yahweh, so on and so forth, so Yeshua came to replace it, to establish it. Isaiah 42, verse 21 said, he came to magnify the law and make it honorable. So that fulfill is not caught. It's not nailing to the tree. No, nobody thought that. But they lay hands on that word called fulfill, and they say, that is the end of the show. They cannot obey the law again because Yeshua has cut it off. Yeshua has nailed it to the tree. Where was it written? Where was it said? They didn't understand the meaning of that fulfill, unfortunately. Here is where all the deceived preachers in, in this world start to proclaim that Messiah was lying. They preached that Yeshua really did not mean what he said in Matthew 5, 17. Yeshua said, I have not come to destroy the law or the prophets. Then the preachers say, the Savior came to nail all those laws, all those old laws, to the cross. Where was he said? Yeshua, what Yeshua said is indicated there or written in Matthew 5, 17. But where these people are preaching that the Savior came to nail all those old laws to the cross? It's written nowhere. Where did they hear it? From the priests of the air. If their father they are listening to is giving them that instruction to speak like that and to teach that way. False teachers, deceitful teachers, all from deception of Satan. Trying to justify this lie, they say that the word translated fulfilled in Matthew 5, 17 means to destroy the laws and the prophets. Not only are these preachers deliberately disobeying Yeshua's direct statement by thinking such a thing, but they also teach a lie. And what did Yeshua say about Satan? In John chapter 8, verse 44, he identified him as father of lies. He's a liar. And in, in John, um, what is that? John 10, 10, where he said that the thief cometh but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So he came, he stole away the word of Yahweh, the law of Yahweh, and he began to teach people lies, corrupted the minds of people, taught people what was never written. The word translated fulfilled in Matthew 5, 17 in King James Version as found in Strong's Greek Dictionary, uh, number 4137, 4137. Now, that word fulfilled is to make, 
the plate, literally mean to cram, level up. Now, to furnish or imbue, influence, satisfy, to execute. And so many, 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 many you know, adjectives we are used to qualify what that is all about. To verify, um, to accomplish. Now, to, to feel, to fill up, to fulfill, to be, to make, uh, to make perfect. So Yahshua came to magnify the law and to make it perfect as it were. That is what that word is all about. He didn't come to nail it or to cancel it or to destroy the law, no. In Tyre's Greek English lexicon of the New Testament by Joseph H. Tyre, page 518, word 4137. We, we receive their complete meaning of the word fulfill. It's written in Tyre's Greek English lexicon that it is all about universally and absolutely fulfilling. Fulfill. That is to cause Yahweh's, that is, they call him their God, but Yahweh's well as made known in the law to be obeyed as it should be and yah's promises as given through the prophets to receive fulfillment so in a way he's saying that it is universally accepted and absolutely to fulfill to cause people to obey yahweh's word to fulfill what yahweh commanded people to obey or to receive. Yes, Yahshua Messiah proclaimed Yahweh's will by teaching that Yahweh's laws should be obeyed. Yahshua Messiah taught that Yahweh's promises and prophecies given through the prophets of old would be accomplished to the letter. They would be practiced and accomplished, but they would not be destroyed. Therefore, the book of Yahweh, the Holy Scriptures, is translated correctly. The word translated fulfill in the King James Version should properly have been translated establish. Yahshua Messiah did not preach against any of his father's laws. Yahshua Messiah did not preach against, against, any of his father's laws. He never. Our Messiah kept Yahweh's laws perfectly. Otherwise, he would have sinned. First John 3 verse 4. Because breaking or transgressing the law is sin. So if Yahshua did not preach the law or had said it's nailed to the cross, it would have meant sinning against Yahweh and his word. But he didn't do that. So, Yahshua was the right person qualified as a savior to preach the word of Yahweh, and he did it accordingly. He commands we keep the laws of Yahweh, as written in John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And if you keep the commandments, just as he kept the commandments, you must abide in his love as you also continue to keep the commandment. John chapter 15, verse 10. Beloved, Yahweh is calling us to pay attention to his word, not to what we are hearing from the air, not what we are hearing from the ruler of this world, not what we are hearing from the prince of this world or the prince of the air or the God of this world. Anybody who is receiving instruction outside what is commanded, the true word, the perfect law of Yahweh, 
the Torah that Yahweh give to us. Anybody that is not led, or when you are being told, when somebody is preaching to you, when somebody is speaking to you, it's not quoting the word of Yahweh. It's not taking you line by line, page by page, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, how this word given to us must be made. If somebody is not taking you through the word itself, run away. The person must be hearing from the prince of the air. The person must be hearing that is what is called false teachers, false pastors, false prophets, false anything false. Run away. It is deception. And that will cost the person his life and eternal life. May our Yahweh help us to continue to hear and hear rightly, hear the truth, follow the truth because his word is truth. May we never listen to man, the word of man, teaching of man. That is the teaching that comes from human knowledge, human wisdom, human understanding. Human wisdom, human knowledge, human understanding is a filthy rag. It's like one trying to make sense of himself or to himself that he has righteousness. No one has any righteousness. Righteousness, our righteousness comes from the word of Yahweh. If we obey him, we will receive his righteousness. He will cover us. He will set us apart. He will make us holy. He will cleanse us all. He will draw us to himself. He will reconcile us to himself. All we need to do is to pay attention. Let us not continue to fool ourselves. The days of human beings in this earth is numbered. The days of man, if you look at the world today, is shaking. If you look at the, 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 the is it the economy? Is it politics of the world? Is it uh, 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 social system? Everything is shaking. Everything is capsizing, turning upside down. Why? Human beings rebelled against Yahweh. Human beings said no to the way of Yahweh. And as a result, remember Yahweh did say that he will watch Israel to do their thing. In their rebellion, let them rebel to any point, but he will step aside and watch them and see what will become of them. And today, we can see that no human being can guide his own heart to do what is right, except we return to the word of Yahweh. But he said, when Israel eventually repent and confess their sins, even the sins of their fathers that led them into this massive sin of rebelling against his word. So when they do that, he will return to them. When they obey, he will come back to them. He will draw them, he will reconcile them to himself. Yahshua came doing the reconciliation. It's only those that are paying attention today to the word of the Father through Yeshua, that Yeshua gave his Holy Spirit after being baptized in his name, he gives them the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit now quickens his people to do what? To, open, to get their eyes open, their ears open, their heart, you know, open. And the veil, the snare of the enemy removed from them. Only those that pay attention only those that are baptized in his name and sincerely want to be saved. People want to, people are going to churches, people are going to assemblies, people are doing normal, but they don't want to be saved. They just want to flock like others. They want, just want to come in like others. They just want to mix, socialize like others, but they don't want, they're not looking for salvation, unfortunately. Because if somebody is looking for salvation, the person was strictly Tell his head, do nothing except abiding the word of Yahweh, following the word of Yahweh, following his instruction. Because it's only the instruction of Yahweh that takes us where we are going. Mm -hmm. Yahshua said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Why did he say that? Because he is the word of the Father. The very word he commands us to obey. But people are not, they don't care. They only listen and do whatever they like. Probably is coming. Yahweh said all those that left him, all those that forsake him, all those that forsake his word, his commandments, his laws, they will pay the price. I'm not saying it to make anybody afraid. Afterwards, the fear is coming. 
those who are not obeying today, they will see the fear. When the trouble, when the, the fright everywhere, all over the world, even the wind that will be blowing will cause fear into the hearts of people. Trouble is coming. How are we going to escape? Yeshua told us how to escape. Yeshua did. Yeshua did. He said we should watch and pray. And what does that mean? You can only watch through the word of Yahweh. Read it. Search it. Find out the spirit that is guiding. If Because in that Bible, there are other spirits. Make sure it is the spirit of Yahweh. How do you find the spirit of Yahweh? It's truth. The word of Yahweh will link you to another word, to another word, to another word, and at the end of the day, you will clearly, and the spirit will evident to you, will clearly convict your heart to say, this is Yahweh, and this is his word. So let us seek the truth from the very word of Yahweh, from the covenant book of Yahweh, from the law, book, book of law of Yahweh. And that way, the trouble that is coming, we are going to overcome it. The trouble that is coming is not going to swallow us because he promised to save us. Two days ago, we treated the aspect that he said he's going to save his people. He's going to save his people massively. There is powerful restoration of Israel. Second Exodus is to Israel. He's going to save his people. Are you going to be part of those who, who he is, is going to gather, those who he is going to restore, those who Yahweh is going to lead back to the land like he led Israel when they were coming back from Egypt, called the first exodus. So second exodus, Israel, is true. The Bible gave massive information about it. Are you reading about them? Are you listening? Even when they are preached to you, when you are told, May Yahweh bless us mm -hmm. as we pay attention, as we listen. And how to serve Yahweh and escape all these things is to obey him and fear him. Many of us don't have spirit, that spirit of fear. Many of us don't care. Many of us don't know that he even exists. We take him as our houseboy. We take him as our, you know, uh, uh, one that is not even serious. We, we think Yahweh is not serious. But when it will be, the, the, the hard days will be hitting the earth, we will know. Because people will seek him, they will not find him. But those who are truly observant, who are truly keeping his word, they will find him. And that's when he will be regarding his people. Because only those that are serious, obeying him, listening to him, will received his spirit. His spirit will go only to those who are obedient, not to the disobedient. Mm -hmm. Disobedient will not have... The spirit of Yahweh has nothing to do with the disobedient person. And those who are mixed up, doing... Oh, they are today here in the assembly of Yahweh or in the communion or congregation of Yahweh, and tomorrow, they, one leg here, one leg here, one leg is in the church, one leg is in the assembly, one leg is worshipping Yahweh, one leg is worshipping Satan. Yahweh does not have anything to do with such people. That is that is what we've been studying since Thursday last week. We've been studying all this. We've been studying. Go back to the videos. Go listen to all these messages. It will help every one of us to escape because there is no more time. The world is shaking. Politicians are promising us heaven and earth. Nothing is coming. All their promises are babash. Nothing is working because the laws of Yahweh are put down by them. Except tomorrow they pick up the laws of Yahweh. But I don't see that coming. Uh, Yahweh, the timetable of everything has been laid in the scriptures. So they are not going to do that. They are, they are Father who is leading them. I want to use them, in fact, want to slaughter them. It's not, wouldn't allow that. Because the target of Satan is to do away with humanity so that he and his demons and fallen human beings will occupy the earth, but he can't possess the earth any longer. 
the, his time and date that we gave him is almost on hand. Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28 said, Yahweh will crush him and he has given him time. The world is almost hitting 6,000 years since creation. At the, towards the end of it, Satan will have only seven years. That is to the end of the 6,000 years. Then everything will be closed. The book will be closed against those who are rebellious, who are wicked, and they will pay the price with Satan. May that not be our lot. May our lot be to see Yeshua return and to take us back to the land, to that kingdom, to that everlasting blissful place to live. And may we inherit the earth as Yahweh promised that the righteous will inherit the earth. May this be our portion in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.